Hello everyone. My name is Asim. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do linear regression on on the stock prices and basically how do we use that to let's say predict what is going to be the closing price or what is going to be tomorrow's price. So let's do that. So we'll be using the SKLearn library. So the first thing is we'll be importing some libraries. So from Pandas, so I'll be importing Pandas. I'll be importing NumPy. I'll import sklearn and I'll be needing uh, matplotlib. Matplotlib is basically your library to plot graphs and sklearn is a library which has different functions for things like um, linear regression. Okay, what is the error? Which line is the error? Line number two. Oops, not from import and import. Okay, so I've already added a file here um, for getting the. It is still giving me some error. Let me check what is the error. Okay, should work now. Okay, so I've already added a data frame um, or a, a CSV file which has the values of Nifty. So let me just upload that. And let's see what is the, the few, I'll just see the head. So basically it tells me the first five rows. This is 2017 data. This is for Nifty and it has OHLC data. This is, I'm showing you for since 2017, I think this is 2022. So it's about six years of data. And for this strategy, since I'll be using the previous close, so I'm going to get the previous close like this. So I'll make series shifted is equal to DF closing price and I'll shift it by one row. So basically this line will shift all the closing prices by one row. And then I'll make another column called previous close which is equal to series underscore shifted. And let's see what is a new data frame looking like. Now you'll see that you have a previous close column and we have a NAN right in the beginning. So we'll have to remove this. So how to remove this? Let's first see before removing it, let's update our time format. So I'm going to update the time format because we'll be using this later. So DF minute is equal to PD dot to date time and then df dot minute and let's do a df dot head again so now it's right and let's see the shape also this will tell me how much how many rows do i have so i have 1478 rows but let's always is always a good thing to check whether we have any null entries so to do that df is null dot sum and it should give me one um, is null dot sum where is the error so it should give me one as it's giving one because the first row has nan because i don't have the first previous rows right so what we have to do is we have to remove this so i have to drop this or remove this row so how to do that is df dot drop na and in place is equal to true. So what this in place does is it will actually save your data frame. So if you do this now, you'll see your first row is gone and we have only 1477 rows left. So the first row is gone. We can even get more info. So to get more info about your data frame, you can do this. It will tell you exactly how many null null you have. And now everything is non null. So we are, we are good to grow. We can even find important things if you want it's not the case in this example, but to get more data about your OHLC, you can do df.describe. It tells you your count, mean, median, um, what is your uh, deciles and um, percentiles. Great. So before we start with our linear regression, let's plot it. So we'll plot the closing prices. This is what we want to actually predict. So we are plotting df.close.plot and we'll be using fixed size. This is the figure size equal to let's say 10 comma 8 
and this is how our nifty looks like this is since 2017 this big fall is a 2020 um, fall as we all know now in this example we will require x x and y so basically based on what we want to calculate our previous close so let's say we want to calculate the close let's say we want to figure out the close using our open price and using the previous close so using two things we want to predict the closing price so this prediction is the close price here okay so this is what we want to predict now we have to import that test train um, module so to do that from sk learn dot model underscore selection import train test split and basically what we are doing is we are um, test, we are just splitting our data into two parts the training part and the testing part this is a general way how it's done and let's do that now Generally, this is supposed to be random, but if you want to just save your state, right? If you want to save um, this randomness, uh, you can do random state is equal to zero so that you can run it at your own end and it will give you the same result. Let me just check where is the error. Um, train test split. Okay, I don't see error here is x train comma x test y train comma y test is equal to train test split x and y okay here okay we've got our um, training and testing done let's print it out let's see how many um, training uh, how much uh, data was used for training and how much data we have for testing and it's 1107 for training and 370 for testing so now we since we have already split our data now let's go ahead and do the linear regression so this is where we are actually doing the linear regression so from sk learn dot linear underscore model import linear regression that's the first thing and similarly sk learn dot metrics import confusion matrix we'll use this because all this helps us to figure out all these scores help us to figure out whether our regression is good or not so i'm just creating our model now so we're we're creating the model and we're just going to fit the model we'll be fitting on the training part so we're putting the x train as well as the y train so basically we're giving the input um, of our x and y value and based on that it has actually made, built the model um, in the in the memory now let us see now let us try to see what is our um, data so basically how a regression works is it will give us the coefficient and the intercepts and since we have two values in the in the training part it will give us two coefficients and one intercept so print regressor dot coefficient and similarly print regressor dot intercept let's see so basically if we want to make like a um, like an equation this is how it, it will give you the equation y is equal to 0 0.94 times open plus 0 0.05 times of uh, previous close and um, this is the intercept this is the um, your delta Let's keep going ahead. Let's try to now see what is the predicted value. So we are actually going to use the predicted value. So predicted value is equal to regressor dot predict x underscore test. So based on testing value, let's see what is our regressor value. But before that, let's see what what test it is doing, and then we'll do predicted also. So actually, let me remove this. It will be easier to understand. So this is these are all the different rows it has used for testing, and it has used open and previous close. And if we want to see what is the predicted shape, again, of course, it should be 370. It should have 
yeah it's 370 so it is predicted 370 values so what we're going to do is let's see what is the predicted value along with what was the actual value so actual is by underscore test and our predicted i think this will not yeah this is how it should work predicted is equal to the predicted value that we have found out and let's now print the data frame so what we are trying to see is what is the predicted value along with the along with the actual value let me check what is the error um, pd dot data frame okay so this is where we are getting the result now so for for all the same rows so all the same rows it is predicting these values so this is the actual value this is what the model is predicting but just by looking at it we cannot figure out whether the result are good or not so that is why the first thing we want to do is we we'll, let's find out what is the score so the regressor dot score we put in the x test and the y test let's see and it's 0.99 so this is the the score looks pretty good but uh, let's see if this score is actually that great so for that we'll be using and trying to find what is the mean absolute error and the mean square error so print mean absolute error and we'll have to use matrix dot mean absolute error y underscore test comma predicted so it's trying to find what is my actual mean error um, on between the y test and the predicted and similarly we'll find other things like mean square error and this time we'll have to do mean squared error is the name be very careful it's squared and not square and finally let's do root mean square for root mean square we'll be using math dot square root and that should give us the result let me just copy it correctly all right let's run it um, let me check where the error is this time math okay so this is what result we are getting now let's try to understand what this means it is telling me that my mean absolute error is 77 that means on average on average the difference between the closing price and the predicted closing price is 77 points now this is a very big error this is a very big error and that is why it doesn't look like a great fit but anyway let's try to um, let's try to do it again what we'll do is let's try to print the predicted values let's see um, okay this will not help us too much um one second let's update this a little bit so predicted is equal to okay and in fact what we should do is we let's plot the graph so let's plot the graph of actual versus predicted so plt dot plot first time y is my actual values so my label is actual and then I want to plot the predicted values. My label is equal to predicted. And let's just label our, so it's index. So I'm just labeling y, y axis and x axis. Let's label our title. and let's show the legend and let's print it out i hope okay play it show okay now you can see here you can see here that here it actually looks pretty good you might say that the, the actual value and the predicted value is very close to each other is actually almost same but by looking at this mean absolute error we can clearly see that 77 is a big difference right so let's try to add more more inputs 
So what I'm going to do here is currently we are only putting two inputs, open and the previous close. Let's try to do, we actually put high and low also. So now I'm giving it more inputs. I'm giving it open, previous close, high and low. And let's try to run it and see if it becomes better. Remember the difference right now. The mean absolute error is 77. The aim is let's try to reduce this. So let's run it again. So I'm going to run all the cells again. And let's hope if it becomes better. Okay. You can see already that this looks a little better. And if you see here, you can see that the mean absolute error has come down from 77 points to 29 points. So what does that mean? It probably means that if we give it enough inputs, let's say if we give it um, volume or let's say if we give it, let's say last five previous closes or we give it things like open interest, right? So things like this, once we give it enough inputs, maybe our result will get even better. And if you're able to predict, let's say five or 10 points away from the actual value, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. But please note, just adding a lot of inputs will also not help. You have to make sure that you're not adding too many inputs, but optimal in inputs should be added. So this is just the beginner. You can start testing your strategies on linear regression. If you like the video, um, again, please uh, like the video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.